The Sundial and the Obelisks are the seasonal activity for Season of Dawn, the thing that you'll be engaging with for the next couple of months. So, how does it work? There are four obelisks, one on the Tangled Shore, one on Mars, and in the very near future, EDZ and Nessus. These obelisks act as vendors, sort of. They provide you with weekly bounties along with repeatable bounties for this season's suite of weapons, as well as another legendary weapon, like for example, Bygones. They also provide other bonuses that you can level up. For example, on the Mars node, there's the Seraphite Extractor upgrade, which you can buy to give yourself a chance to get planet mats when you kill Cabal. And there's the Crucible Fractaline Extractor upgrade, which gives you a chance to get Fractaline when completing Crucible matches. These two specifically have multiple tiers that you can upgrade. The next two appear to be one-time upgrades, only one purchase needed, where you can increase the amount of weapon frame bounties you can hold by one, and you can increase the number of rewards you get from the sundial by one. Then, we have the source of the new mods featuring the Charged with Light mechanic. Finally, we have the sundial links, which I'll go over in a minute. But, all of these things require you to upgrade the obelisk itself. To upgrade the obelisk, you need Fractaline. Fractaline mainly comes from the weekly bounties available on the obelisk, but they also come from the Crucible slash Gambit and what I assume to eventually be the Strike Extractor upgrades and various Triumphs along with the Sundial itself. You need 200 Fractaline to level up the obelisk one time. Progress on one obelisk does not affect another. Each obelisk is leveled up individually, and it's part of the savior title to level each of them up to level 10. So, in short, use Fractaline on obelisks to upgrade them to unlock more access to weapon frame bounties, mods, and rewards. The Sundial Link mechanic is how you'll determine your rewards from the Sundial. Each obelisk has two weapons linked to it. You can either buy their respective bounties, or play the Sundial in order to earn them. At the end of the sundial, when you activate the panel, you'll be able to choose which weapon you'd Our like a random roll invisible. of as a reward. So, if you linked the, the Mars Obelisk back. to the sundial, then you'll be able to choose from the Mars Obelisk weapons. The Tangled Shore gives the Tangled Shore, etc. You'll be able to upgrade the amount of rewards you can get from the sundial from the Mars Obelisk, and you can upgrade the amount of linked obelisks from the Tangled Shore Obelisk. These upgrades require rank 11 though, which is quite a lot of Fractaline. As of this video, we do not know what the other obelisks will give either. They could give more upgrades or more rewards. The Season Rank Track also gives boosts to Sundial and Obelisk rewards. Level 12 increases your Sundial Link Capacity by 1, Level 32 permanently increases the amount of rewards from the Sundial by 1, and Level 92 enables you to get alternate final perks on Time Lost Weapons. Level 52 increases the speed at which you complete Time Lost Weapon Bounties by 25%. These bounties have a random objective like grenade kills or super kills. The Sundial itself should be familiar if you played the Menagerie in Season 7. There are three different arenas with different objectives. These are mostly straightforward, stand in the plate, throw the ball at the bad guy, and dunk the ball on the thing, but we'll go over them real quick. The Plate Encounter, aka the Data Mine, requires you to stand in a plate for a little while. Every so often, Scion Commanders will spawn in, halting your progress. These need to be melee killed to continue. A boss will spawn after the plate is captured. After that first plate, you'll have two more plates that you need to go control, both with bosses at the end, where the team needs to split apart. The same mechanic applies here as well, it's just harder because you're split into groups. Not killing Scion Commanders will be the reason you don't get maximum points here. It's actually pretty tough early in the season, although that could be because people don't know the encounters very well yet. The Bomb Encounter, aka Bombardment, requires you to kill Centurions, take the bomb that they drop, and throw it at the boss in the middle. Rinse repeat until done. The final encounter requires you to kill increasingly difficult to kill minotaurs, take the ball that they drop, and dunk it in some panels on the opposite side of the area. This will spawn a boss at the front of the area where the minotaurs were that needs to be killed, rinse, repeat. 
you'll have champions spawning in this and all other fights throughout. The final boss for this first week is not too bad. You sometimes get thrown into a detainment bubble that you need to shoot yourself out of, and then it's mainly just killing the boss, killing Scion commanders to resume the fight, and staying alive. The Sundial, much like Vex Offensive, is very combat heavy, but I do think the Sundial is harder. Things can get pretty intense considering how many Majors and Ultras will be spawning in along with Champions. My biggest piece of advice for the Sundial is run the Artifact mods, run Unstoppable, run Anti-Barrier. The Champions, at least at the start of the season, are not pushovers and are actually quite threatening. Two people on Anti-Barrier and one person on Unstoppable for this first week, for example, will trivialize the Champions. You could get away with not having mods in Vex Offensive since everyone was grouped up a lot and the champions weren't super threatening, but at the moment, in Sundial, while you can get away with having no mods, I don't really recommend it. And I think that basically wraps up the seasonal loop for Season of Dawn as we know it right now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.